Hello everybody and a warm welcome to Members Week. Um, I'd just like to introduce myself first for anyone who doesn't know. My name is Susan Ayle and I am the Membership Development Manager here at RSS. So we will shortly be starting the CPD and How to Do It Right presentation by um, Dr Rob Mastro Domenico. Um, so just a few things before we start, so just a little bit of house rules. Um, could you please make sure that your cameras are turned off and that your speakers are muted? Um, and you will actually have some questions, uh, a question and answer session, and that will be at the end of Rob's presentation. So if you could hold off asking the questions until the end of the presentation. And um, if you do have a question, please could you type it just in the chat box? So I am delighted that we have Rob joining us today. Um, and he has a lot of experience in terms of CPD, but also in the profession of statistics and, um, and data. So without further ado, I would just like to hand over now to our special guest speaker, Rob Mastro Domenico. Thank you. Hi guys, it's uh, nice to be a special guest speaker for <laughs> once in my life. Um, thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, really good to be here. Um, I was actually asked to Susan approach me saying I was a good person to talk about CPD and there's uh, probably a good reason for that. Um, I'm a bit of a CPD freak uh, from my time on Professional Affairs Committee and we'll get on to that. Um, but this talk is entitled CPD, How to Do It Right for CSTAT and it's a kind of what we're going to do is if we just go on to the first slide. Um, the overview is uh, what is CPD in relation to CSTAT and we're going to kind of just cover what CPD is in, in relation kind of from a kind of statistical point of view and from the RSS's point of view as opposed to a general uh, professional development point of view but I think everything kind of comes together if you're going to do it for CSTAT it works out quite nicely in general as a, as a statistician somebody working in statistics um, that kind of thought process behind it is relevant to all areas of, of what you do um, and then how can the RSS help so if you are going for CSTAT or your professional qualification through uh, the RSS, what things are out there and how that can kind of help you along your path? Because um, for me personally, it's been a big help. Um, I'm then going to kind of give an example um, and use myself as a case study because that's the easiest thing for me to talk about. So I'm going to just give a slight overview of kind of my career, what my background and also kind of what I've done in the RSS to kind of give you a kind of oversight of how I've uh, you know, enhanced what I do professionally um, by doing things away from work, from some of the volunteering opportunities and what you can do through the RSS. And then I'm actually going to do some CPD examples. And these are actually from my um, CSTAT uh, application, which was a fairly difficult thing to do because um, I actually was a consultant um, statistician at the time of doing it. And I, didn't, I had no kind of senior management or anyone to report into. Um, but that didn't stop me doing it. The RSS supported me through that. And, and nowadays, there's lots of routes for people to become a professionally qualified chartered statistician. But let's look at talking about CPD. So um, the CPD, uh, Career Professional Development, in relation to CSTAT, is essentially you logging your development. So um, one of the things with CSTAT, if you're a younger member, you have to gain the experience to become a chartered statistician. If you're maybe a more experienced member and you have that experience, you still have to demonstrate some form of CPD. Now, you might ask why? Well, um, if you think in terms of any statistician, um, myself included, I can gain a qualification. I can say I'm out there practicing statistics but how do I actually prove that? Um, you know, having a job, saying my job title is X and I do statistics is one thing, but actually the kind of CPD part of the application is key in terms of you being able to demonstrate that you are continually, um, you know, practicing what you're doing and you're developing yourself. And I kind of felt doing this was a good thing in, in just in terms of me reflecting upon what I'm doing right now and kind of what you do as a statistician uh, and this log is in the form it can be done online I think everything's changed since we've moved to the new platform um, when I did it it was all kind of um, document based but it's all kind of you're evidencing what you're doing so you have an example um, that example will, will demonstrate one of the kind of traits that you need 
Uh, and then you're going to show kind of what you've learned from it. And it's supposed to demonstrate your continued professional development. Examples of what you can do. So they've got the work based learning, professional activity, the formal educational or the self-directed learning. Now, one of the kind of key things that people forget when they're doing CPD or in terms of CPD is what actually constitutes um, CPD. It's not necessarily enough to say because I do something that is continual professional development. And I think that's probably one of the keys. And it goes back to why I was probably invited or asked to do this talk. Um, during my time on professional affairs, what we would do is we'd have lots of people obviously applying for CSTAT and those applications get reviewed and they, you, know, you get accepted or you maybe come back with some kind of comments. Um, what I would find or what I was very kind of uh, hard on was people not necessarily taking the CPD element um, as serious as they could, or maybe not understanding what the CPD element of that was. And maybe we had uh, certain examples, of people listing uh, hundreds of hours of work done that they said was CPD, which essentially might have been the same thing. Now, in our kind of uh, general careers, work, whatever we do, there'll be lots of kind of instances of us doing certain activities and that activity um, may be being seen as CPD, but once we kind of grasp it and we can do it, we may repeat it, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're uh, developing from a kind of professional point of view. Um, it's kind of like learning the skill and then practicing the skill in, you know, in a kind of work environment. The, the learning and that kind of side of it is your development point. The actual, when you're able to do it and doing it on a regular occasion isn't development. So there would be kind of uh, forms where people would put on, you know, a repeated task and give that hundreds of hours because they do it all the time. And it's an easy mistake to make, but it's not, it's more the kind of development side that you need to think about and how what you're doing is actually improving you as a statistician. And in kind of looking at these areas, it really makes you think beyond the standards. Um, a lot of these are fairly easy, work-based learning. If you have a job and you're a practicing statistician, data scientist, um, have you classify yourself, you'll be doing some kind of aspect in the work activities. Um, from an educational point of view, again, it's easy enough to kind of learn stuff, take a course, add on to that. And the self-directed learning, again, can kind of link back to, um, you know, learning new techniques. So I'm going to demonstrate each of these. I've got two examples of each of these from my own personal one that can kind of give you a bit of a hint. And I, I give a kind of brief overview, but also kind of the thought process behind choosing it and, and what I learned from it. Uh, probably the key one that we find a lot of people maybe struggle with is the professional activity, because that's something that's non-work related. So in regards to that, um, it's a case of how you kind of go about, um, you know, getting that. And this is where the RSS can help. So. Um, as a member of the RSS, you obviously get all the member benefits, um, and there are lots of them, but you also get kind of some really good uh, volunteering opportunities. So if you want to get more involved, the RSS is always keen for people to get more involved with the society. Um, and things that you can do, um, you could join one of the sections or local groups, which is a kind of great thing to do as a kind of volunteering opportunity. And, and it's something I've been involved in. Um, as I'll go on to when I talk about what I've done throughout the RSS, but you can join your a section in a specialist area that you might be working in. You could join a local group round about where you live, and those will kind of give you opportunities to do things which are a little bit different to what you might do within your work environment. Um, there's also the mentoring scheme. So I actually became a mentor from being on PAC and complaining too much about uh, people's CPD. Uh, somebody had an excellent application, just needed more CPD. Actually, the CPD form was brilliant. Uh, and they suggested, well, why don't you do it, Rob? And I became someone's mentor. Uh, and for people who have CSTAT and are practicing, this is a great way to kind of uh, develop a bit further by mentoring a, a younger individual, somebody who's applying for CSTAT. Um, and that can be a different way that you can kind of add more onto that kind of professional activity. Um, those ones, uh, especially sections and local groups, it's not, you know, lots and lots of opportunities. It's a finite set of groups, finite set of sections, and there are committees and there are only certain places that come up every year. So it's not always going to be as easy to just get involved straight away. 
something that is out there that you could get involved in is statisticians for society and obviously from my personal point of view it holds a place in my heart because i'm chair of statisticians for society for any of you on the call who don't know statisticians for society is a uh, a pro bono scheme to connect up statisticians with small charities who need some sort of statistical analytical work um and it, we we just got funding for the next five years from the national lottery and this is a way that you can actually get involved and work with charity and give your skills for free that really make a difference and i think this is one of the great things from the society that you can do um, for those of you who don't know you can go through the website and sign up to the mailing list what happens is we get requests from um, charities and they are then put out to members to apply for if you think you've got the skill set or you like the look of the charity and we try and match you up and then you would go away and do the work with the charity and that could be anything from a small data analysis analyzing a survey some research some general advice on you know best practices you know there are lots of different things that these charities need and those what we found can develop into kind of long forming relationships with the statistician continuing to help out the uh, charities and be involved and, and that's a great thing that you know a lot of statisticians could apply for and do and have an extra bit of kind of thing to put on to their um cpd form and i think in general it's a good thing to do and lastly but certainly not least in these current times it's slightly different but still equally relevant is the conference um some we do obviously every year alongside all our other great events but the conference is an opportunity for you to come and mix with other statisticians present be it a talk a poster or just kind of participate and you know widen your horizons and it's something as simple as that could go onto a cpd form if you're kind of going outside your comfort zone and going to a conference and you know meeting different people and your kind of reasons and what you've learned from going to the conference those things are important um e even this year i was involved in a session and we had someone on us in our session speaking who'd never been to a conference and had never spoken at one and she was talked about the kind of how valuable that was to her to have that experience of speaking at a conference and being there and i think that's something that you know it's great for people to get involved in and you know when we get back to some sort of normality it's a great event in general for meeting other people um and and i think it's something really positive that you know the rss offer that you can kind of get involved in and those are kind of the key things that the rss do that allow you to you know add to your um cpd however how do you do cpd so let's talk about myself some would say that's my favorite subject not quite though um i'm i'm like most of you i'm a statistician i have a degree in maps and statistics i did a phd in statistics i uh work for a consultancy company i then set up my own consultancy company i'm currently cto for a startup company all kind of not necessarily fairly standard but like it's not very different to a lot of people's careers in the you know i've just kind of gone the normal path of education work progressed in work then done something different and so i've got some variety there so i've got a lot of things in my work that fairly standard but give me opportunity to kind of demonstrate or at least prove my uh, cpd the probably difference is the things i've done in the rss so I've been involved in the RSS, it'll be 10 years, I think, next year, um, formally being a member. Um, and since then, I've pretty much been involved since day one because I joined the RSS post um, my first job. I essentially set up a consultancy by myself and I kind of identified, I, I, you know, I needed to uh, be more open and be more contact with more statisticians, more people within my kind of sphere of work. Uh, and it's, I think it's a very common thing, you know, when you work that you don't necessarily see the greater world out there. Um, but the RSS kind of offered that to me and I'd kind of already become familiar with it from doing other things during the last few years before leaving. But as soon as I joined the RSS, I, I got on the young statistician section. Um, following that, I spent four years, well, I think it was five years on council. Um, I was the honorary officer for membership, which meant I worked directly with the membership team within the RSS for four years. And that was a great role, kind of actually shaping a strategy, you know, trying to engage with more people to join, you know, initiatives such as the e-student, um, e-teacher, other things were kind of born during that period, which was great. I was also chair of the sports section. I still sit on the sports section, I'm the vice chair now. I sat on the executive committee 
and which is a kind of smaller committee above, well, alongside the council. I was on professional affairs committee for one year and uh, only stopped that just because I didn't have the time I thought to dedicate to it because professional affairs, I think it's a great thing. The CSTAR, everything around professional membership is, is brilliant. Um, but to be on that committee, it required a lot of time of which, you know, we're all volunteers, we've got jobs. I wasn't able to give that and, and more so I'd already kind of committed to being chair of statisticians for society. So my kind of uh, area outside of my work is fairly busy. Some would say too busy, but I've kind of tried to do enough. I, I do things generally because I like them, but at the same time, what I find is that those things kind of allow me to um, have a bit more kind of breadth and depth to you know what I do. I become not more than my job, but there are other things going on. And, and from that, there are probably other things that I haven't mentioned, which are a kind of consequence of both. I, in the process of writing a book on Python, I teach courses on Python through the RSS and, and other places. Um, I've done some online courses uh, in, in the kind of computing world. Um, and, and so those kind of things come quite naturally, I think, when you start getting involved outside of your kind of normal world. And, you know, I've used a lot of the RSS examples that just kind of gave me a bit more breadth of what's out there. And I think the RSS as a whole, as you know, as a member benefit just for being there for statisticians, showing them more. It's great. I'm probably the exception, not the rule. You know, not everyone has the time to do lots and lots of things. And I wouldn't say, you know, copy me, you know, what I'm doing is great. I, I just kind of, I'm very much, you know, like to take on things and probably I'm too busy sometimes, but one or two things over a period or just maybe one thing, it's going to be more than enough to give you those examples you need for your CPD and allow you to kind of show that you're committed to your continual professional development. So let's look at some of my examples. So what we're going to do is these are actual examples from my CPD. Now, when I was putting together these slides, it was quite good. I took about three or four presentations that I've done previously on CPD and amalgamated them into a kind of best of. So what you're getting today is the best of. And this was part of one I did where I actually went through um, essentially all my CPD form. So it was a session we used to do at a conference and I would just go through and show them my CPD form because um, it just gave people kind of an idea of what it's like, what you have to do. And so when they're doing it, they've got a good example. Um, so this was a work-based learning example. And the example was presenting to potential clients. And the kind of concept around it was um, as, a, as a consultancy, I was obviously running the consultancy. I had to go and get uh, clients. I had clients from around the world. And um, I had to learn how to kind of communicate with them uh, and kind of get across the statistical method I was using in a technical and non-technical way. And this was the kind of good example here. I had two distinct clients, one in China, one in Malta. The Chinese clients, um, obviously the language was an issue, um, but also they weren't technical in, in nature. So um, the way I had to approach that was very different to what I had to do in the Maltese company who were technical, but not in that specific area. And um, both resulted in winning work, which was great, but the kind of, the reason it got in there was because of the, the kind of, I hate to use the word, but I'm going to use it, journey, where I was able to kind of show what I learned from this, you know, in doing this, I had actually learned something. Uh, and, I, and the talks to, weren't 15 hours, let, let's be quite clear. They were, you know, the meetings maybe were long and they weren't necessarily just sitting up and doing a 30 minute presentation. And there were lots of kind of other things, um, you know, linked into that, how you kind of, how you deal with different, clients and cultures and, and and you know that kind of way of dealing with everything but the kind of overall learning that I got from this from putting together what I needed to reports presentations doing it I clocked in at 15 hours which was deemed suitable enough to kind of put this into my CPD so something like that was uh, 15 hours of CPD um, whereas some would argue that might only be the time that you were doing it it's not the doing it's the kind of the whole process that you're trying to get um, the second one, we're kind of, I put in a very generic one that, you know, I thought a lot of people might be able to do. And this is obviously uh, training a new hire. So um, as, a, a, as a company owner, I would recruit people in. And 
being the boss, especially when you're growing, you, you do a lot of the onboarding yourself and you have to train those people. And this example was for a web developer and it was more so a little related to the previous one, but more so in the work setting in that we were a kind of consultancy doing a lot of uh, statistical methods, uh, modeling, analysis, and actually what was happening was um, we were bringing in people to kind of put that into a web-based setup and that was um, that was allowing me, meaning me, I had to train these people and so therefore I had to kind of learn those new school skills of how you do that. It's not necessarily clear. It's one thing selling to clients, as in the previous example. It's more kind of communicating methods and how they work to non-technical people. Um, and this kind of training, although I imagine it would have been close to 10 hours, or, or maybe even more, there was probably 10 hours of which I could say was actual CPD and, in, and was useful. And so that's what I clocked in there. Um, then there's the professional activity. And so for me, I had a lot to kind of choose from in terms of uh, what I could do for professional activity. So on, on my one, I actually went for uh, the council. At the time I was currently on council and a member of the executive committee. Um, and it was more kind of to show that you gain a, a few different skills from this. So whilst uh, sitting on council, executive committee and being honorary officer for membership involved a lot of hours, a lot of work. The CPD I got from that was probably around about 25. Um, for example, uh, Council meetings were every quarter. They were three and a bit, three to four hours long. CPD, but there is a, definitely a learning curve from going on to council and learning how you deal with people. You know how to essentially um, act in a different environment, and, and being on a council trustee of the society or on the executive committee, you, you do learn things about obviously how the society works, but then how you should behave the lessons you learn, how you talk to people, how you communicate, communicating in a bigger kind of uh, ground with more voices. Uh, and similarly for the honorary officer for membership role, that's not the same skills I would have had from being on council or the executive committee because I'm now working with the staff and I'm having to try and, you know, understand all the nuance as it comes to the membership. And obviously the RSS is a membership organisation and, and getting on top of that and, and what I'm learning from that. And, and a lot of it is, you know, it's your learning. It's what you've gained. It's what you've developed. And probably a good point to put on is this wasn't all that went on the sheets that I had. So these are the kind of overviews of the, the what I put on there. These are the examples. What would follow would be some kind of explanation of, of what I learned, what, how it went, what was the kind of outcome, what was the development? Uh, and it's that kind of reflection that's key. And then it shows that you're thinking about what you're doing and how that's improving you uh, and making you a better statistician, just all around developing you from a professional point of view. And it, it is very reflective. And I think once you kind of get into it, um, one of the things people say is it can be a little bit daunting to try and set up a log or, you know, if you've got the examples, go back and fill it in. But actually, it's quite nice to kind of stay on top of what's what you're doing and think, are there any areas that I'm not kind of paying attention to? And this can kind of help with that. Um, another professional activity, one was organising meetings for the sports section and uh, professional uh, statistics forum, which I was on. And it's the same type of thing in terms of if you think, well, you, you're just in the RSS, you're just doing RSS stuff. But the skills that go into organising meetings and events are a lot different to what you would have from sitting on the council or the executive committee. So whilst it's still a kind of similar area, actually the, the skill set and what you're doing is very, very different. And, and 20 hours on that, um, again, um, to emphasise, when you're on these committees, you might be organising multiple meetings a year and doing this year on, you know, multiple times within the year and year on year. They don't all count, you know. I can, because I've organised, you know, six meetings, it doesn't mean all six meetings count, but in doing it, I've learned some things and therefore those lessons and experiences are what count towards my CPD. And that would be what I'd be putting on as the kind of my learning outcomes, what I've learned from doing this. And that's the key part to get from it. It's that example to what you've learned and then how that has developed you. 
Similarly, from the kind of formal uh, education um, uh, is the courses. So, uh, and this was, uh, I didn't do this just because I thought it'd be good for my CPD. And a lot of this, probably from my point of view, was retrospective. I wasn't doing this as an ongoing log, which I think um, for those of you who are going towards CSTAT, it's a much better way of doing it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But this was one where I, I, I just wanted to write a course um, looking at what I did for the RSS. Maybe you can kind of uh, ascertain that I'm a little bit uh, crazy with overcommitting stuff, but I thought it'd be really nice to run a course. And I always enjoyed teaching and it was one aspect of um, working in consultancy that I wasn't really doing. So I just wrote a course uh, and did it. And it, it was a good course. And I, it, it, you know, it went well. It's been popular ever since. If you want to learn Python, you can do that through the RSS, as well as many other courses that the RSS offer. Um, and they, they, a lot of those will be taught by people like myself, statisticians who have expertise in those areas, who like to teach and teach the courses. So I think that's another kind of area of your membership that you can take advantage of because you get obviously uh, rates for uh, members for those types of courses. Now, writing a course doesn't take 30 hours. It takes a lot more than that. Um, but there is a lot of kind of moving parts in that and how you do it. And I gave that a bit more time because it was a, a longer thing. And I probably, whilst again, a lot of writing the course is, you know, you're just filling in this, filling in your chapter space, you know, um, getting it up to speed. A lot of it was kind of iterative in terms of if I, I've never done a course before, I'm learning how to write a course. And therefore, there's going to be a lot of development in there because I can't just sit down and straight off just write the course and know it's really good. It, it wasn't like that. It took me time. There were, you know, issues I had and, and I had to learn from it and, you know, change what I was doing. And that would be the kind of thing you would explain as to how you're developing yourself and, and what you're doing. Um, and that's a kind of key aspect to, you know, that reflective part of it and, and how it applies. And obviously I've shown this across a few examples now. Um, the other one which I thought I put in um, because I did mention it before was attending the conference. Um, um, I generally attend conferences most year. I always think it's a really good thing. I, I've pretty much I've done some of most conferences now. It'll be coming up to ten years again next year, which is crazy to think about. Um, but I, I always think the conference is a good place to meet a lot of uh, my friends from the society, a lot of the people from the society who I know, and um, just see a load of good talks and you know kind of, I don't want to say geek out, but you geek out a little bit, you know, you're around a lot of statisticians and it is, it's fun, you know, we like this kind of thing, that's why we do it and the conference is somewhere where it kind of supports a lot of different things that you may not normally see, which is kind of why I think it's good. Um, it probably is a strength and some would say it's a weakness, but I like the fact that I can go to a conference and see some new things, learn some new techniques from areas that I would no, normally not consider um, and I generally, when I go, I try and uh, look at things that I'm interested in, but others uh, maybe, that maybe aren't my kind of normal thing, but I could maybe see something in it to try and get ideas. And, and it's great for that. Um, but I give myself 20 hours for that, um, even though a conference might last a week and I'm there the whole time. Um, doing different things at the conference, I've done stuff in terms of you know, helping with the running, uh, presenting, running sessions. All of that would have got put into this and the kind of what I learned from it and just the general being at the conference and, you know, that everything that goes with it. However, putting it in, I wouldn't be able to necessarily use this again. So that's probably a key. I'm not on my next CPD going to put in, oh, I attended the RSS conference because I've already done it. You know, I've been a lot. People will have seen me there. Um, and so therefore, it's not CPD anymore because I'm doing the same thing. If maybe I had uh, a really big talk or something that was a lot more outside my comfort zone, that might be something that I would put onto my CPD form so that, you know, because that is something different um, and therefore you kind of, you have learned from it. And so it's not black and white in a lot of this. You know, you have to pick what you do based on who you are and where you're kind of going. Um, I then used a fairly generic one here. I had to learn something. <laughs> You know, it's, it's fairly standard fare in, in work. Um, and this was learning a kind of new technique. Uh, some, uh, the, and it wasn't statistical, which is why I've put it in here. This was a kind of a very uh, techie technique, but was needed for a, a project we were working on. And so being the boss, being the most senior, you have to learn it. 
and you know it's what you get from that learning how you did it you know how you kind of got around the problem and that development from it is which is key and so you know I don't necessarily think there's a few examples we've covered here in terms of working with new employees um, things that are not necessarily statistical but still CPD it's your development as a statistician not necessarily your statistical development I think that's a really key thing to understand that there's more to being a statistician than just doing statistics um, there's you know there's the whole thing of the kind of professional world you've got to you know work in and you know thinking of yourself within that and, and what you're doing or where your weaknesses are and how you can kind of improve on those is, is key um, uh, this last one was statistical, though. Um, we just had a problem. I, you know, it wasn't necessarily the problem. I think in this case, it was uh, some kind of technicalities around that problem and how I overcame it, how I got to where I needed to be. And all of this is kind of, you know, learning new things, developing myself, you know, making myself uh, a better statistician the cpd thing isn't necessarily something i think you should just do uh, and let go and hopefully these examples have kind of shown that um and and that was kind of all i really wanted to speak about i've been given 30 minutes i'm nearly there in terms of timing um but as a kind of some closing remarks cpd is important um i i don't think it's just one of those things that you just do for your um c stat or or even in work a lot of you guys, girls will have to do it as part of kind of your development to progress, to show what you're doing. I think it's a good thing to kind of have in your mind. Where am I going? What am I doing? Am I missing areas? CPD is a decent way to focus yourself because um, I, I will speak for myself. I can't speak for you. you know, work and life can go very quickly and you can soon turn around and you'd be like, oh, I, I should have done that. I should have done this. CPD is a way you can kind of keep an eye on. Are you doing enough and making yourself rounded enough? Um, we're not saying you have to go off and, and copy me, do everything I did, join every committee in the world, it seems, you know, do talks all the time. But there is a kind of middle ground of doing appropriate amounts of pushing yourself and trying to develop aspects of, you know, maybe where you're not strong and identifying where you're not strong. Um, and I think that's the key with um, this. It's about showing development and not just doing things and identifying where you can develop. And that's as important as anything else is knowing that, you, you, know, you know, there's always going to be room for development and that you're always going to need to kind of develop yourself to improve yourself, regardless of how good you are. Um, there's always going to be some kind of room to do that. And I think probably lastly, as I don't want to go over my time, the RSS has like really good volunteering opportunities which can be used as CPD. And I think uh, if you're going for CSTAT uh, and you need to do it, which obviously you have to be a member, Make use of your membership, make use of what is there in the society, um, not just for CPD. I think a lot of the things, while I've shown, can be used for CPD. They're just good in general. You know, I didn't join a section because I thought it would be good for my CPD, for my CSTAT application. I joined a section because I'm interested and it was good and I enjoyed it. Um, similarly, I didn't go on to council because I thought, well, this is a great thing to have on my C CV. I got to council because I, I enjoyed the society and I wanted to be a trustee uh, and I was invited and I thought it was a, an honour to do it uh, and I still do. It's it's about kind of doing things you like and kind of making that work within the, the realms of CPD, but also identifying where the RSS can fill holes that you may not get from work or other similar areas. And uh, I think that's all I've got. So uh, that's me done. Um, if someone can stop sharing my screen. That's me done sharing my screen. Um, hopefully you enjoyed all that um, and I'll hand it to Susan. Thank you very much, Rob. And it's fascinating to see all of the different avenues that you've gone down um, since you, you started in, in your career. Now, you mentioned earlier um, that you have been involved with RSS for um, around 10 years now and I just wondered if you can give an insight into how the the uh, demands of CPD have changed in the time that you've been here. Um, I mean I can only speak in terms of uh, you know what I know from the kind of professional point of view. Um, CPD is CPD I, I suppose it's the extent to, to which you do it and 
um, the expect, extent to which you kind of practice it. Uh, and professional affairs has grown. I think that's probably one of the bigger things. And now CPD becomes more important as we, you know, CSTAT isn't necessary just for statisticians graduating with a degree in statistics who want to get a chartered status. It could be for somebody who hasn't got a degree in statistics. There's so many different routes to get into it. And so it becomes more and more important, you know, especially if you're trying to demonstrate that you're practicing statistics and, you know, maybe your job role does, but you don't have that piece of paper which says I'm a statistician. It's, you know, and that's really common these days in this kind of data driven world. Um, there will be lots of people who will be like that. And therefore, the CPD is the element where you sell yourself. So that is just becoming more and more important as, you know, I think the RSS becomes a bit more inclusive of people from a non-standard statistical background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely um, becoming more inclusive uh, uh, recently. I'm just going to check if we have any questions. I saw someone had their hand up before. I'm not sure if they, they still want to ask a question. Um, do we have any questions from from the members? Just going to check. Um, so while, while, they, while people are thinking of their questions, if, and I'm just conscious of time as well, but I just want to run through a few others that I had. Um, now, one of the, um, oh, so, oh, we do actually have a, a, a question actually from a member. So it's probably best to come from a member than, than myself. So Stephen Smith, uh, he says, as a data science manager and the most experienced statistician at, at my company, how can I get more senior mentoring help? Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, great question. Uh, the mentoring scheme, I think, if you're uh, going for CSTAT, and I think, uh, Stephen, like your your kind of perspective is one where I think we're going to see it much more common. Whereas historically, you'd get people who are like working in pharmaceuticals or academia or something which is heavily in that area. What we're seeing now is data science is prevalent in lots of companies and we're, small little data science teams are, are growing and you know you may you look and you've got a few people working for you like but I'm the most experienced the mentoring scheme is kind of some somebody who can be more senior to you to um, give you that mentoring I don't know if you're chartered or if you're thinking of it or have done it but you know that that's a great way to get that kind of level of it yeah cool Gr right answer because that goes right into what I say if you were to go for chartered status which I think Thanks, Ricky. Um, I think it's a good thing to do. Then we can kind of hook you uh, a mentor who can just be somebody who you've got. And, and that mentoring relationship could be really different. Um, it, some of, some mentors are really hand on in terms of, you know, there's a lot of contact. Others, it's much they're more as a resource for the individual to come to. Uh, as a mentor, I'm kind of not very hands on, but I'm there if I'm needed. You know, I'm not going to be pressuring my mentee into doing lots of stuff but if they have a question then they can kind of come to me and I've met the person who I'm mentoring like we, we met at a conference and we had a chat had a coffee um, and just to kind of get to know them a bit more and just kind of say you know I'm there if you need me a lot of the times you know it, it might be they don't but when they do they really do and it seems like you know maybe you could do with somebody to you know have that kind of level of contact with I also think being involved in the society in general is, a you know, maybe trying to get involved in the sections, local groups, attending meetings. You do get to meet people. And I, I've got like a lot of uh, friends, I suppose, yeah, that, um, from the society um, who I just know from going to meetings. Like I'll go to a conference or, or some event and I'll see people who I've, I've seen at other similar events and you build your network up from there. And I, I think it's like I was saying very earlier when I set up as a consultancy company and I didn't have anyone just me I kind of needed that extra bit and the RSS can provide it but you kind of got to open yourself up to you know go into things uh, yeah I, I did actually want to uh, just to add to that that we do have um, a session on local groups and, and join local groups um, later in the week so if you'd like to um, look out for that one then I think that'd be a really good one to join um, I just want to talk about the mentoring as well and I just wondered if there was anything that um, found it either challenging or rewarding while you were mentoring is there something that it gave you that you wouldn't have had 
I kind of think that like just helping people is quite nice um, in terms of, you know, we've got to help out, you know, certain individuals, an individual and, you know, improve them. And I think in terms of working with somebody who's, you know, being a mentor, it kind of makes you think about yourself and what you're doing. So I think it's kind of circular, you know, the developments all the way around. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of think it's good for both parties um, and you learn a lot from it. And Stephen, yeah, you should try and set up a local group if there isn't one. Also, there's something that you touched on throughout the um, presentation, which is that you have been somebody who's been very involved in um, activities and you've had um, time to do that, uh, although at some point it's been more challenging. So if you have kind of the opposite where you, you don't have a lot of um, you, don't, you don't feel that you can commit to a lot of um, activities and uh, you're kind of worried about how that will reflect in your CPD. How do you go about um, choosing which CPD to do? And um, is there anything that you should maybe prioritise over other things? Or is it just in just in general, any type of CPD you can do will be valuable? Uh, I mean, in general, I don't necessarily think I always have the time to do things. I seem to be doing them um, and then I just try to catch up elsewhere I, I'm of the opinion like if you do what you like and you do things that you're interested in it doesn't really feel like work or you know that hard and you'll just want to do it and and you know a lot of the things I do you know like being on council if I'd have to go to a council meeting that's a day out of my work that I would have to do on the weekend or something you know I, that work didn't disappear and I, I you know nobody was letting me out to do it um, and I just kind of think you pick and choose what you like. I wouldn't necessarily rush into summer just to say, get some on your, to say you've done it, put some on your CB, so it's on the CBD form. Find what you like, you know, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities to do things. And, you know, not everything is for everybody. Um, you know, I, if I go back to the PAC example, like I really enjoyed my time on PAC, but it was clear I didn't have the time to get to it with other things. So, you know, I, I had to, you know, step away, which was disappointing for myself, but it would have been worse, I think, to have just done it and not done it well. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities, local groups, sections, everything. Find something you like, you know, find some like minded people, you know, do something you want to do. And that will probably be, that can become your CPD. And then you're not necessarily, you know, push doing things that you feel you're doing just for the sake of it. Um, so I always try and do things I like. Well, I think that's a really good uh, general philosophy to to go by anyway. Um, so I I do, uh, do we have, I'm just going to check for the timing. Um, I think we might have to um, wrap up fairly soon. So uh, I do apologise. Are there any other questions from our members? Just going to give a little while. can't see any but it be that it's best to get involved where you can be realistic about the times and um also just kind of go with what you want to do so there's no point in doing something that you're not gonna end up enjoying is, is that fair to say so i live my life <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, it's been a real pleasure having you speak for us today, Rob. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if we couldn't get through all of the, the messages today, but thank you so much for sharing with us your experience. And um, thank you for, for giving us your time today. Uh, we'll, we'll let you go now for a well-earned break. <laughs> and um, we'll hopefully no we'll have another session soon. Thank right. you. Thanks for inviting thank me. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Take it easy. Bye.